Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we want to accomplish a couple things. Number one, I want to test and see if I can run a welder, a 120 volt welder off of an inverter. And then I'd like to build, no matter what, whether we can or not, a portable cart for my welder and all the welding stuff. So let's dig in, I'll show you what I got. We have this Vivor TIG welder, it's a MIG welder, it's a stick welder, it kind of does all three and it runs off of uh, 110 volts. Uh, you can also run this apparently with the same plug according to what it says on it anyway. Uh, you can run this off of 220 if you wanted to. It's a nice little welder. The problem is, is whenever I need to use the welder, I need to usually take it somewhere. So something's broken out you know, somewhere and I, I have to carry, put all my stuff in the bucket of my tractor and the, you know, in the golf cart or something. and and haul my, my gloves and all my tools and wire and metal and all that stuff around. So what I would like to do is make this portable. My plan is to reuse this solar cart. I don't use this anymore because I have a couple other portable options that I have built for power around the homestead, so I don't need this anymore. I will link to the video where this was built. It holds solar panels on the front, it had a little uh, battery inverter down below, and then it has this little little case right here where you can store all kinds of uh, uh, goodies. And it's basically like a dolly. So you just pull right here, it's on, it's on wheels, it kicks back, and you can you can move it around. The solar panels went right on the front of it, and so you just point it towards the sun and it would recharge, and then I could use this as portable power around the homestead. But I think it would work really well for the welder. The welder should fit down below. I could put batteries, a battery bank in this uh, case, and then maybe mount the inverter below and uh, have a po completely remote powered welding system. Can I run this thing off of an inverter? I have tried in the past off of two different inverters I have, a couple different 2000 watt setups and they did not work, it tripped them. And so I'm not sure what's gonna happen. We have four Goldmate batteries. These are uh, what they call LifePo. Uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, these are 20 amp hour batteries, 12 volts. These are real nice batteries. You might hear some uh, some humming from this heater. I have my my little diesel heater out here uh, heating the shop instead of firing up the propane one. So I just kind of shove it in the door. So these are uh, real nice batteries. And I think that with four of these put together, I can make a nice little uh, parallel battery bank that will power that inverter and power the welder. That's the plan. The reason these things last so long and they're so nice, and a lot of these, the bigger ones especially, are, are kind of expensive. They have a built-in BMS. And so what that is, is, is each one of these batteries has a built-in battery management or maintenance system. Uh, they're smart batteries, basically. The monitor, the cells, the temperature, the amp draw, input and output, voltages, all that stuff, they monitor all of that to protect the battery. So they make sure that they charge properly, that they discharge properly, that you're not harming or hurting them. So they have some safeties built in, which is really nice. If you pull too much current, it'll actually, you know, kill it or limit it. If you, you know, try to charge them too fast or with the wrong chargers, it will stop them. So they're, they're very uh, uh, nice kind of uh, bulletproof little batteries. The nice thing about these is they can be mounted in any direction. They don't need to necessarily sit like this, although that is the best way to, to operate them. But they can, they can tip around. There's no fluid in these things at all. They're fairly light and they, they put out a lot of horsepower. So these are the batteries that we're gonna use for today's experiment. And I went out on Amazon and I bought the cheapest 3000 watt power inverter that I could find. This is a uh, Load King. Is that the, I think that's it. A uh, Load King power inverter is a 3000 watt. It is not a pure sine wave. So it's a, it's kind of a junk inverter, I guess you could say. Um, it is uh, hopefully gonna get the job done. Comes with some cables. Well, before I get this thing built, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to wire these batteries up in parallel. So we're going to run uh, all these batteries. I have four of them. We'll unpack those. We're going to wire these all up, jump them, and we'll hook that inverter up, hook it up to the welder, and weld something, and let's see if it works.
Well, I guess that answers that question. As soon as I just even try to power this on, it, will, uh, it won't stay on. It keeps flickering on and off. I have a feeling, so I have powered this off of a pure sine wave inverter, a little nicer inverter in my portable uh, battery system that I set up. This cheaper inverter, I think is just no good for this purpose. So we'll take this and uh, we will exchange it for a pure sine wave. It's just gonna cost me about a hundred hours more, which I didn't want to do. So we're gonna try that. But the batteries, uh, the battery bank turned out really nice. So we're wearing these in parallel. So we've got all of our positive connections uh, connected together and all of our negatives. We'll power just off of one end of the battery bank. When I set up to charge this, uh, I put the charging connections right on the uh, far end of this. So we'll charge from this end and we will pull uh, power from the other end. Hopefully that will help just to even out the, the battery pull. Uh, but this uh, charger I got, it's just a cheap little charger. It's for uh, lithium ion batteries or lead acid. You just switch the mode back or you know either way. And it comes with two different ways to connect it. Uh, it comes with the alligator clips, uh, so I could just hook this on to a battery, but you can disconnect it here, and then I can hook it up to this. So in my welding cart, I will just have this, you know, tucked underneath the, uh, the lid there, and then I can just pull this out when I want to charge it and plug it in. All right, let's get this plugged in and charge up this battery pack. We'll see how well it works here. It's already set in the... Uh, lithium iron phosphate or lithium battery pack mode and solid red light means that it is charging so it looks like it, it works uh, these battery chargers do have to be specific for lithium ion batteries you and with the battery management system that's built into those batteries you have to have something that's compatible with that well let's get this cart modified i don't have to do too much so let's do a little work to this and get the welder all put in there That's a metal blade.
well there's the there's the basics still a little little work to do but this gets all my welding gear in one place uh, this can be moved with the tractor and I also can uh, lean this up against it, the golf cart and, and tow it around with the golf cart so I can tow it far or I can just use it as a hand truck basically it just leans back pivots on the two wheels and I can I can haul it around that way welder fits perfectly in the bottom so I've got my extra uh, hookups here I've got the TIG welding hookup and then my ground and my MIG feed, my wire feed. Helmet hooks on the side here, as well as the extra power cord. So this latches with these little barrel connectors or barrel uh, latches. This actually has a hold that, that'll hold that open. So I've got the Goldmate batteries in here ready to go. This will uh, power the inverter. This is the legs of the uh, solar system, but this also kind of holds the the welder in there when it's when being transported But this way I have access to my my wire to replace And I have pretty easy access to the front of it here I can see all the knobs and dials and this this actually turned out pretty good I think this this kind of feeds right out the side there pretty well. This is just a little container. We've got some extra metal in here. The tubing for uh, a gas hookup, if I want to do that down the road. Uh, my wire feed clamps and some wire, you know, wire brushes and welding gloves. All that stuff just kind of sits in there. These two uh, two by fours, they flip out so that I can hold more more solar panels on the front of this when it was a solar generator. Uh, these don't have a, a huge purpose anymore. But I did find that I can throw my uh, stick welding sticks in there and some extra scrap metal. And then this will kind of swing down and act as a hold. So it can hold uh, extra pieces of, I could even put some three quarter inch or one inch piping in there and other metal scraps. And I also could add a small oxyacetylene cutting uh, torch system and just run a strap around the front. Well, I have a I now have a mobile uh, welding system, but I didn't achieve the the goal. The goal was to uh, make this thing completely self-sustaining or portably powered. I've got a few ideas. I definitely know I need a pure sine wave. I think that a three thousand watt should be enough to power this. My only fear is that the initial surge of, of strike in the arc uh, is going to trip the inverter uh, overload. I also don't know if the inverter can can surge enough power quick enough. Sometimes those have a little bit of a slow start with the with the power release. But I thought maybe I have seen a few uh, 220 volt inverters out there. So maybe I can get a European uh, 220 volt inverter, maybe 2,000, 3,000 watt pure sine wave, and use that to power this welder. Maybe that would help it a little bit. Let me know what you guys think. Look around and uh, maybe make some recommendations for me. I'm, I'm going to look around a little bit tonight, and so I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, let me know what you think. Can we power this off an inverter? Another thought that I had for you electricians out there uh, of using a hard start capacitor like an air conditioner. So I actually purchased one, but I was a little nervous to hook it up because I'm not quite sure. I think this needs to work with a run capacitor. It's designed for an AC uh, uh, com you know, compressor. Let me know what you guys think. If this is possible to use uh, for a, a hard start for a welder, basically. Uh, the, I'm familiar with hard start capacitors and run capacitors for AC condensers and for you know big uh, heating and cooling blowers. But in this case, I'm not sure exactly how it will work. Love to hear your thoughts. You'll be seeing a lot more of the Vivor welder out there uh, on the, around the homestead fixing things, I'm sure. And you'll be seeing more of those Goldmate batteries, the uh, lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate batteries. And it, of course, if you're looking to buy batteries, any relevant discount codes or anything like that that the company I can get from the company, I will put those down below in the description as well. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Love to hear what you guys think. I need your help on this one. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.